Hi everybody, welcome back to Mando Lessons. My name is Baron Collins Hill. In this week's lesson, we're gonna have a little talk about the chords to The Fair Wind. It's a tune we've been working on. Uh, in the first lesson, I taught the tune by ear. It's a great Irish tune, three-part reel in the key of G. And then I did a simple to complex lesson where I took the tune and added some embellishments, some triplets and double stops and things like that. And in this lesson, we're gonna give a little talk about the chords and figure out what the chords are, some nice strum patterns and chord voicings to use so that in the fourth lesson, the play along jam, we can jam on the tune together. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so a great way to start out with any tune uh, is figure out what key it's in. So if we've been playing this tune for a while, you probably know that it's in the key of G and that's a good place to start with the chords. So let's think about, I'm just gonna use this open G string and fifth fret on the D string as a G sort of drone chord while I'm gonna sing the melody and maybe point out a couple spots where I feel like that G chord doesn't work. Cause a good place to start is just playing the G chord through the whole tune and take note of where things start to get a little dissonant. So I'm just gonna have this right hand pattern. Dum da da dum da da dum da da dum. Yup da da dum da 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 So the G chord works pretty well over the whole tune, especially as that little drone of just an open G and fifth fret on the D string. It's just two Gs, it's not gonna clash too much with whatever's going on. And you'll hear some Irish music accompanists do that and just play one chord through the whole tune. Um, it's a nice sort of drone pattern if you keep it nice and simple. And then that also gives you some time to figure out, hey, where are these dissonances coming in and what other chords can I try when things don't sound quite right? So let's try that. All right, so we've got our G chord, and let's just play it until we hear a little bit of dissonance. So that open A, the end of the A part, ends on that open A, and that A is not in a G chord, so the thing that I've talked about in the past is what are your three chords in the key of G? We have G, C, and D. Let's see if that A note sounds better with one of the other two chords. So, G, G, and then a C. And I'm just using my regular three string, or four string C chord. I'm usually not hitting the high E. Sometimes I don't even hit the high A string. Um, but it doesn't really matter in terms of chord voicing at this point. So, G, it's a G, and then a da 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 doesn't really sound good anyway. Let's see, yeah. hey, that sounds pretty good. That A note with an, a D chord over top of it. So, let's put a D chord there. G, it's a G and then a D. G, it's a G and then a D. Because the melody goes, ends on a D note. Now that would work with a D chord or a G chord. It can be a little bit of personal preference. G, it's a G and then a D. G, it's a G and then a D. Or you could do G, it's a G and then a D. G, it's a G and then a G. But I like the D, it gives a little more tension. So let's do that. I'm now just sort of converted or reverted to classic G, C, and D chords. G, G, here is the A part. G, sorry. <laughs> here we go. G, 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 and then a D. 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 That's the start of the B part. So right off the bat, what I kind of like to do is hang out on that D. 
dum. Gives again a little bit more tension to the sound. Makes that G. Gives that G chord a little bit more weight. So then we have this strange little dissonant moment of C A A. Now I would call that a D chord. It's kind of, you could think, well, is it like an A minor? Or is it a, an A? So it's got C and A, which is a bit of an interesting set of notes. Um, I would call that a D chord and assume that it's using the flatted third of the D if you want to get into the music theory. Because D is D, F sharp, A. And then if you make it a dominant seven, C, A, D, A. Uh, sorry, C, A, F sharp, D are the notes of a D chord. And I think it works pretty well to put a D chord under that. So, there's the G chord. That worked out fine in my brain. And then it happens again. Back to that D. So we have that hold out on the D. Let's get that right hand back into it. Again. And then the C part. So that. Those big notes are G, E, and C, which are the exact notes of a C chord. C, E, G, E, C. So that's a great spot to put in a C chord, and I think that's a big part of really what makes this tune special to me, is that C, that four chord, that C chord in the key of G, um, that starts off the C part. That's sort of how I hear it. C and then a C, a G and then a D and then C and then a C, a G and then a D. Again, C, C, G and then a D, a C, C, G and then a D. And that ending on the five chord, the D chord in the key of G, brings you really nicely back to the top of the tune. So I'll play it about that speed with classic kind of two finger chord shapes. And again, mostly focusing my right hand on that, getting that nice constant down up, down up movement and not playing a whole lot of the A and E strings in these chord shapes, mostly focusing on the G and D. It sounds like this. That D. And that ends the whole 
part time through the tune with the chords. Now for a little bit of extra credit, let's think about some different chord shapes to put into our left hand. So let's go back to that kind of droning G. So that's our G chord now is that droning G again, kind of frees up some space from turns into just the G and D strings open in five. And then our D chord, I'm just using two and open on the G and D strings. So the C part is where you get some nice little bass movement uh, opportunities. You don't have to do this by any means. Again, this is sort of uh, extra credit, but a nice little move you can do. So the chords are C, C, G, and then a D. C, 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 a G, and then a D. And we're gonna replace that C chord with this little double stop again, just the G and D strings. Fifth fret on the G, second fret on the D. And then we have a G chord, and I'm gonna use four and open, cause that's really close. It gets that, starting that walk down. And then it's gonna go to two, but for now we have five and two. Four and open, two and open. For that D chord that we've already used, that shape. Let's loop that a little bit, five and two. Yet and dirty dumb four and open yet and two and open yet and back to four five and two buddy dumb four and open two and open again five and two four and open two and open five and two four and open two and open yet and dirty dumb dirty All right, so let's play through. I'll play the melody a couple times and you work out some of those chords we were just talking about. Here we go. One, two, three, four. B part. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of a baseline for some chord ideas and getting your right hand moving and chord progressions for the tune Fair Wind. Uh, again, chords are a very personal thing, so you might hear other people doing totally different chords. That's totally fine. 
Um, and maybe you're hearing chords or kind of movements within the chords that I'm not doing, and that's great too, but this will give you a nice kind of bass line that uh, won't sound bad with the tune and will give you basic structure of what uh, you might expect someone to play. If you hear someone doing something else, see if you can find out what they're doing. Maybe they're throwing in a little minor chord. Um, again, chords are very personal, so everybody hears them different. Everybody has their own take on them. Um, but yeah, see what you can find and listen for differences and see if you can incorporate them into your playing. Subscribe if you haven't already, because next week we are going to be doing a play-along jam for this tune, The Fair Wind. Uh, all my lessons are always free, and subscriptions really help. There's also a couple links in the description of the video that can help you find places to support me. I've got a Patreon page where you get access to the lessons a day early, a patron-only live stream, all that sort of stuff. Uh, there's also a simple PayPal donation. You can also buy merch. So check out the links in the description. Uh, I appreciate all the support, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Bye-bye.